Um, right, just thought I'd do a quick video on um, perspectives and how to check your perspectives. Um, I might have loosely touched on stuff like this, but I thought I'd do a proper video on it. Um, as you can see, I've got several sketches here, which I've just quickly knocked out. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to um, check that your perspectives are all right. Um, and there was a good method that one of my old teachers showed me. Um, the key area, say if you're doing cars, like for this example, um, you have an axle line which goes through the wheel. Um, So you've got two axle lines, and then your ellipses are always 90 degrees to the axle line, so you end up with a crosshairs like that. Hence why if you use an ellipse tool, just to show you for example, price center point and use these as reference as to where your lips should sit and just go place in the actual center of the actual wheel and then based on that you then see how uh, the ellipses are placed in your sketch for you your um, wheels. So as, as long as so that's the way I, I use these four points. They've got they're ninety degrees to each other no matter what you do. So that helps if you're using it digitally. So that gives you an idea as to how you get your wheels right. Um, and then so these are what you'd be like your perspective lines which obviously have vanishing points. Um, so if I just hold these up for now, I'll come back to these in a minute. Just want to show you your vanishing points. If you've not blown perspectives, your vanishing points, typically the way you're taught vanishing points is perspective lines, which always merge to the same point. Now, the best way to describe this, if I was going to use that particular set of perspective lines to draw a car, I may draw a car within, say if that is my display area or my sheet of paper, your vanishing points can easily be quite far off your actual uh, piece of paper. So you kind of have to imagine them. So as long as you get in these lines that evenly spread an array away from the vanishing point. So these two here, for example, could be the axle lines. So then you have 90 degree to that line or perpendicular to that line. Same thing. Um, it's going to be spokes or wheels Ellipse, sorry. I don't know why I said spokes. It's just because I draw spokes rather than drawing wheels. And then from that, you can get the back of the car, the front of the car, the roof of the car. Using that grid. And eventually, the aim is you won't have to draw the grid because you get so used to drawing it. You, you see it within your mind sort of thing, you visualise it but you don't actually draw it and then you can see like bottom of the win windows, top of the windows, top of the roof, obviously if it's a curved roof it's kind of the centre point you're looking for, all follow within the perspective and this applies to whatever angle of view you choose, so say if you did um, something like 
really wide angle lens if you think about it in terms of photography. So as long as they evenly spread out, they're all vanishing somewhere well off the screen, then you do 90 degree. So if I'm going to choose this one and this one for my axle lines, you're going to have an ellipse like so. And this is just the way I was sketched. I, don't, I never draw the four wheel anymore. I used to, but um, so this is quite a extreme fisheye lens view sort of thing. From to the car, wherever the car is. So if it's a Super Mini or Ford K or something. So and then the grey area, which is windscreens if they're curved and whatnot over the shoulder the rear front front of the cars are usually curved now they're not flat so what you're looking for is if you have the front curved you want where your vanishing point is to be where the center of the car is so i.e. The, the most furthest point for, forward so if, say, if that was to bend around there, the most furthest point forward, i.e. the centre of the car, is perpendicular to those. So if I was to get a line there, the most furthest point forward or the middle of the windscreen is on that line between the, where the A pillars are, same thing. And you want all these lines to match up to the same vanishing point. Um, obviously, you can't just go off the screen and work it all out, sort of thing. But you want it to look as if it's right. Um, yeah. So as long as they they all seem to flow in the right direction, and you can see the axle line here is giving me the top of the windscreen almost. Um, Again, in this sort of direction, top of the shoulder to the front shoulder, to the roof. Eventually, they should all meet at the same point. So that's basic perspectives. Um, so you can, this is a good method for the way you start setting up sketches and stuff like that. And you get used to it after a while. You just seem to see it when you you've done it so many times. But for you learning, it's kind of important to know. Um, so you can see how a car is built up there, but the, yeah, these are the best way of checking that your car is in perspective or your sketch or your product or whatever it is, is going over these key points. So you've got bottom of the car, the front, top of the bonnet, axle line through the wheels, perpendicular to the ellipse. And when I say that, I mean the widest point of the ellipse. Is perpendicular. Same for the rear. Um, to check your A pillars are the same on both sides. Check the roof is the same. You can even check your wing mirrors. So your wing mirror is going to be there. You can check the shoulders. Obviously, it depends on if you've got a, a raising waistline. It's obviously not going to be in the same perspective but you could even visualise it as a box if you really wanted to. Um, yeah, so that is how you check perspective on your sketches. Um, you could flip the sketch, and a lot of people do that, but I don't see the need for it really when you check your perspective lines. Some people prefer it, you know, you do whatever your personal preference is, but... That's the basics basically. So if we go back to all of these, and I do, it, the same principle applies to whatever the sketch is. So 
if I just go over these that I did earlier, I got bottom of the wheel, I've got the bottom of the car, center of the axle line, which is perpendicular to where the ellipse would be. And then you do the same for the rear axle. Merging, so these are these will excuse all them terrible lines. These would all merge somewhere, probably over here, some, somewhere in this region. And so, in theory, that should, which clearly doesn't. So, this is a good example actually. So my windscreens are off in comparison to the bonnet. So these, so the windscreen really should be something like that. But it's a bit of a weird one that is. Maybe something's not right in this area. So that's going in that direction. That's going in that direction. So I'll concentrate on these ones, so then something here is not right. So maybe it's the axle line is not right. But it's a good method for checking all your perspectives, and then you can do the same in this direction as well. So you can do, bear in mind, if you've got curved, same as the windscreens really, um, but it, it's good practice to learn and practice and go over your sketches. Um, if you're doing it with a, pe a pen and paper, my teacher at uni showed me that um, just use a use the pen itself and just put the pen where you'd visualise the um, perspective lines to go over them all, and just make sure that everything's in the right place. So. Then say if you go on this one, there's that line, that line, that line. And then there's this way as well. Um, let's go over this one. So there's the center. So there's the center of the windscreen. There's the center of the bonnet. And there's the front of the car. Axle lines. Ellipse 90 degrees to the wheel. The, the axle line. Same for the rear. And just make sure that they're evenly spaced and angled. As in, you know, to gradually goes around sort of thing. Um, game for this one, it's quite an extreme angle. So mm -hmm. just check all your lines basically and There we go, and that's the basics of perspectives um, doing your cars. Um, I hope that helps. Um, yeah, thanks.